So let's change gears now and think about some other important new indications for these checkpoint uh, inhibitor therapies. And one of the most exciting uh, new findings that's come out at the 2014 ASCO meeting has been in the management of uh, bladder cancer. And Rob, would you like to share with us some of those, that information? Sure. I mean, we're obviously going to talk about kidney cancer in a bit, so let's just sort of step back for a second and remind ourselves that three GU cancers, prostate, urothelial, kidney, have all had immunomodulatory therapy is a long tradition. Cipulusal mm -hmm. T in prostate cancer, the first and only therapeutic cancer vaccine, BCG for non-muscle invasive disease, and interleukin-2 mm -hmm. and alpha interferon for a long time in kidney cancer. So we have this history. Urothelial cancer is just one of the nastiest epithelial cancers. It's sort of an unusual situation where we have better therapy for melanoma than we do for urothelial cancer. No drug approvals in 20 years for that disease. PDL1 data that's been shown at this meeting, I think provides us not just a little bit of an inkling, but a really an amazing potential transformation in the management of the disease. Unequivocal, single agent activity, well tolerated, and let's remember the population. The average age of these people are in their early 70s. About 40% of them have renal compromise. Therefore, even the best therapy, cisplatin-based therapy, can only be used in a subset. Randomized trials, five to 10% potential cure rate for nodal metastatic disease. Everybody else dies, median survival is in the 14 to 15 month range. The data that we've seen, albeit preliminary, shows single agent, significant objective tumor responses with the limitations of phase one, two kind of data, what appears to be significant impact on progression-free um, time points with a very favorable toxicity profile. Already launching into very large phase two programs, you know, this is one of those rare solid tumors left that a well done large phase two trial could even conceivably lead to regulatory mm -hmm. approval because that's how bad the therapeutic environment is. So this is for those of us who've sort of labored in this disease for a long time. And I, again, I reflect on what we did in kidney cancer before the targeted agents came along and certainly in melanoma, this may be the class of agents that are gonna make a big difference. Well, you know, it was interesting because we were doing the trial with the MPDL 3280A as a phase one, and as it expanded, there was talk, what, what tumor types should we look at? And you know, bladder is a smoking-related cancer, and if you look at uh, numbers of mutations uh, per cell, you know, it, bladder's right up there. So I know the team, and you know, at our site, Dan Petrolak and others, mm -hmm. started to ask, what, you know, can we treat more bladder patients? And I know all the sites started to do that, and, and the results really are extraordinary. They're, they're off the charts. I mean, again, it's, it's hard to, uh, it's hard to deal with the enthusiasm. We have to be measured about this because obviously there's lots of work to be done, but the excitement is unequivocally there. I agree with what you said, and I, I think everyone sort of agrees on it. To get a breakthrough designation based on this number of patients it's, clearly is an indication to us <laughs> that a large phase yeah. two will get this uh, approved if it's as positive 